So Arsenal nil. No, sorry, Arsenal nil. Let me start that again. Take two. Uh, Norwich nil. Arsenal five. Back to back fives. Um, I can't re remember the last time we scored back to back fives. But before we get into player ratings with Kenny Kem, the game against Wolverhampton Wanderers on Tuesday has been called off due to the amount of positive tests and injuries that Wolverhampton Wanderers have. So there is no match day on Tuesday for Arsenal. Uh, the next game we have is Man City on New Year's Day. Uh, Kenny, big up to you, man. Appreciate you coming on, giving up your time. You know what? You know what? I love winning. Losing is so boring, you know that. And I just want to... <laughs> You know, I always always look at teams where they are on the table, and they are where they are for a reason. You know, um, like I said, you know, I said, Farker was sacked for a reason. You know, even though um, a new manager has a new manager's bounce, if you've got the same sort of personnel, the same problems are going to be there. I.e., the inability to get goals from around a team, the poor defence if we play, midfielders not tracking back, and they're there for the taking. They're right for picking. And we had to be ruthless because, you know, with uh, May United and um, Tottenham Hotspur getting their um, players back, not so much getting their players back, but getting, you know, their COVID cases down, you know, they've got um, what I call them um, winnable games, i.e. games in hand. So we have to keep on winning to put the pressure on them. And also, um, you know, like I said, make um, the quest for the top four interesting. But less, most importantly is that, it's about players stepping up to the plate. We talk about our young players like Saka, Smith Rowe, Martinelli, and obviously we talk about Odegaard, who was uh, handpicked by our dear manager to become part of the team. And for part of the season, we have been critical of all of them, with the exception of Martinelli, although we criticised the manager for not including them side. So at the moment, they're quickly realising that when you see a uh, give me in the Premiership, you've got to take it. And they have taken it with both hands and they score goals as well. So their goal difference has improved. But, you know, special mention has to go to Saka, scored a couple of excellent goals. You know, um, also, yeah. um, like I said, leading in line. But, you know, Odegaard, again, one of the things, you know, strikers need to do, if you want to make an impression, you want to, you know, like I said, um, make your crickets, you know, you know, say something else will be quiet, stuff their criticism down the throat. And he's done that in um, consecutively. December has been an excellent month for Martin Odegaard. 100%. I thought he was outstanding today. And that's what we want to see from him, Kenny. He obviously watches the shows with me, you and Jez. Uh, so does Saka. So does Smith Rowe, because all three of them have stepped up their game since we started wanting them to step up their game. Uh, let's get straight into the goalkeeper. Uh, clean sheet, most in the league this season 11 clean sheets the last time we kept um well the last season of Wenger I think we kept 13 since then we ain't come close we're all doing 11 inside what 18 games this season he's going to break the clean sheets compared to Wenger's last season he has got the most in the league didn't have a great deal to do today um, not at all and, you know, and... so, the good thing about that is that you know he breeds confidence you know what's happening moving forward if we are going to move forward be a team that you know that's taken seriously in terms of competing for, you know, I wouldn't say just for top four, but you know, if we do, you know, get into a situation where we do get European competition, clean sheets have to be uh, being in abundance. And I think if you've got a goalkeeper that's confidence and knows his way and he's enjoying his football, then that's going to be very good moving forward. And even if we do change for the league, regards who's um, our coach, you know, goalkeeper who's confident and keeps clean sheet, this is what we need. For me, as you say, not much to do, but you know, the fact is is that you know, sometimes when you don't have don't have anything to do, you have to be vocal, you have to use your eyes because you see everything from um, you know, like I said, from in front of you, not a defender, but yourself, you can see the bigger picture. And so, you know, in that respect respect, I'm gonna give him a six. Uh, let's move to Ben White. No, oh, sorry, Benjamin White. He was playing at right back well, today. Right, he played at right back, and sometimes Benjamin White has a bit of a had a sort of Willie Willie Young moment. He had a bit of a Willie Young moment, but as I said in the fan cam, one of the criticisms I had of Norwich was their inability to, um, like I said, um, you know, how, how to say it, you know, like I said, um, transcend the game from defence attack. They had no pace, and they tried to play a long ball. And for me, I'm not, I'm not um, one of those um, people who who had many fears of being um, left back saying that. 
you know, he's there's a bit of carelessness creeping into his game, which I I find I don't like. So I'm going to mark him down and give him a five. Yeah, I, I don't think he was great. I can't lie. Yeah. I don't think he was great. He never offered an outlet for Saka either. Um, maybe that was instructions. Uh, let's move on to the opposite side. Kieran Tierney got a goal. Uh, first goal he scored well, for a while. You know what, Kieran Tierney, you know, like I said, he's one of the things, my biggest criticism of him was his inability to get into the last third and be effective. And that was before his injury. And, you know, something that Tavares was doing was getting those areas made effective. But you know what, Kieran Tierney's been in... Re I was very impressed with his performances, um, his performance against West Ham. And I was, I was equally impressed today because, you know, he scored his goal and it's, it was because he got him behind um, the Norwich defence. And um, he scored a goal. He, you know, he, he was a great strike and I'm happy for him. In terms of setting off again, he got into those sort of positions. And that's all you want Kieran to do is to hurt the opposition. Because I think what's happening right now is that a new find by, um, you know, Thomas Tuchel is your match winners are, are going to be, you know, your fullbacks. And invariably, not you don't want your fullbacks to, you know, like to um, just create chances, put great crosses in, both on the floor or, um, you know, high, high crosses as well. You want a situation where they can, you know, steal in and get the odd goal in here and there. So I'm very pleased with him. I'm going to give him a seven today. I know people say, Ken, couldn't you give him a bit higher? But I thought, yeah, seven, come on. There's, I think there's players who play better than him today. And that's why he's only getting a seven. 100%. Uh, let's go to Gabriel. Gabriel, you know, he could have lit up a cigar and had an easy easy night. But, you know, wh wh whatever he did as well, you know, it, I think that they weren't really hurting us staying on Gabriel's side. And I thought, you know, I'm going to give Gabriel six. You know, like, Norwich went out in us today. You know, I think he, well, I was going to say, you know, Wolves is going to be a bigger test, but that's going to probably <laughs> further down in January or yeah, probably. Yeah, we've got a um, night off, mate. We can just March, so. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Let's move to uh, Rob Holden. His hairline's looking kind of good. Is his defensive hmm. play looking kind of good, Kenny? Well, I thought, I thought, you know, Rob, 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 you know, him and um, there's a bit of kamikaze situation between himself and, um, and, um, you know, like Benjamin White. But I think, you know, in terms of Rob Holding, you're not going to see Rob Holding play well in that right right um, centre-half position. His best position, where he played his good football, was either in a three or in the position where we where um, God, Gabriel was occupied in the left-hand side because, you know, I think he is a lot better there. I'm not, it's not because he's left-footed, but he's just used. He's used to... Um, you know, like I said, working on down that left. You know, Tony Adams did that very well, and obviously uh, John Terry did that very well. I call it the, the um, I call it the um, London East position because obviously Tony Adams is from Dagenham East London, and John Terry's from Barking. So I call it the London East position. You know, that left hand setting half position. But you know, Gabriel has to play. He's playing good football. But you know, I'm gonna give Robert six. Didn't do much. Didn't 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 um, upset the apple cart. But you know, with the COVID situation as well. And the fact that you know players have to isolate for a long, long time, he's going to be um, very much needed on New Year's Day because I'm confident Man City will won't have the situation the Wolves had. And let's 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 not forget last season when he played against Man City, Ryan, Ryan Sterling, five, all five foot seven of him, yeah. on <laughs> above him, to get that goal. So let's so Rob, watch out for that on um, um, like I said on next Saturday. Let's go with. Um... Let's go with Thomas Party. Thomas Party. We're, we're, Thomas Party for me, you know, like for me, he had uh, what I call uh, an easy game as well. You know, there wasn't any bite in the midfield. And you know what? He, he you know, it's, these are actually good um, games for Thomas Party because the simple reason is that he's got a lot of space and he's going to be able to work into his fitness because we're going to need Thomas for next Saturday. We're also going to need Thomas for our game at, well, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. I believe that that game, alongside our game against Man United, is going to be a six-pointer, regardless of who else. It could be a six-pointer for the Europa League or it could be a six-pointer for the um, Champions League or it could be a six-pointer where we try to cement their place in the Europa League or, and Spurs try to get in the Champions League or vice versa. Spurs, Europa League and us, you know, like the Champions League. It's one of those games where it's a must, you know, you can't afford to lose and you'll gain a lot if you win. So, you know, this, 
it's one of those games where Thomas has to, you know, man up because second half of the season is where we're going to learn a lot about our boys, you know, because everyone says we haven't got Europe. That's fine, but there's a few six pointers, a few games where, you know, where we're going to have to show our quality, and teams are going to, you know, of you know good quality are going to be uh, competitive against us. You know what I mean? And that's where he's got. To, that's where he's got to earn his money. Second season, these are the games we bought him for. Hundred percent. What's the, what's the score you're giving him? I'm going to give um, Thomas uh, six. Um, his partner in crime played a bit further forward today. Granite Jack. Um, I'm happy with that. He, you know, that was a good reason to go from Granite. You know, uh, there, no one was in Granite. There weren't much pace coming past Granite. You know, it was a, it was an easy game for him as well. You know, he, he did a Granite thing. Great um, crossfield pass in order to try and set up an attack and set it off. But, you know, a, a, great track, a great tackle, you know, I think the thing that, you know, apologising and helping him up probably saved him for referee for, you know, for taking, you know, a greater interest in that tackle. But you know what? We've always asked for a player to put their foot in. We all, yeah. one of the things we complained about under um, Arsene Wenger when we had um, like Barcelona, the players are too soft. You know, they don't know how to fight their corner. We've got a player that fights his corner and we've got a player that can pass the ball. But in terms of the athleticism we want in our midfield, especially in the pairing, he isn't giving us what we want. And, you know, he's, he, you know, we, we, we look at him, we're thinking, yeah, but we want a bit more. We want something more dynamic. And I think that's why Granite get, gets, uh, doesn't get a great press. But, you know, I'm sure if he leaves the football club, I'm sure in time we'll think, you know what? At least he put his foot in it and he thought he thought he's called up for the football club. So I respect him for that. Mm. Score for Granite? Granite is going to get a six. Uh, let's move forward to Martin Odegaard. Best game of the season. Martin Odegaard was excellent today. Yes, I fully respect everyone in the, um, in the comments below and anyone who watched this show from abroad will say, yeah, it's only, it's only Norwich. It was only Leeds. It's only West Ham to play and not... And Southampton are defeated. I look at this in sort of, you know, like factual kind of way. You still have to perform and you still have to perform to your higher standards. And, you know, the fact is, is that you still have to engage and be a, like, a, a proactive figure in terms of us winning games. And goal and performance is going to get him many marks. And today, we apart from the fourth goal, he was involved. You know, he set the tempo and people knew that as soon as he got on the ball, they had to move because they knew that he was going to find them. And for me, I'm giving him a nine. That was an excellent performance. You know, that that's one of, that's one of the performances that I've want, I've always wanted on a consistent basis from Mezuz. So, you know, yeah. I, I know I know I know people might give other people higher marks, but I like people who Is he your man of the match then on the nine, yeah? You're back. Well, I'm not sure you're gonna to have to find that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's go to Gabriel Martinelli. Gabriel Martinelli stretches teams, and that's what we've got. What we like about him as well, and it's a shame that for Abamyang, that you know he's actually playing the Abamyang position, and he's doing that well because the same reason is that he's got no baggage, you know, in terms of his age, in terms of any any uh, misconceptions he has about the manager, and the fact that he's a young lad you know players of Aubameyang's experience can say to the manager well hang on here I, I play my best football in this formation this position play me there or I need more from you I need more creativity he hasn't got that package so he just goes out and plays his football and he's shot the day I'm going to give him a seven he had a good game today had a goal disallowed but you know what again there were players I thought who performed better than him mm. Uh, let's go to the opposite side. Uh, somebody that we wanted to score more goals, be more decisive in a penalty box, got a brace today. Second goal was world-class for me. thought it was superb. His first goal, very, very casual, nice goal, slotted it in, Bukayo Saka. I thought it was a fantastic performance for him. You know, he, he, again, it's it's what, again, doesn't matter what the opposition is like. You still have to perform. You still have to be effective and you still have to be clinical. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, regardless of you know, what the, um, the opposition is, the stats are going to, and the score line's going to be, what, did you score? Yeah, you scored. Did you play well? Yeah, you played well. Does, was it not? Who cares? And I think that's what you've got to say about Berkayo. You know, I think he's quietly um, getting back into the full fitness, um, that, you know, the kind of fitness that we had before, um, I thought that um, 
Southgate and Mikel ran him to the ground. But you know his his fitness levels are 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 of um are a lot bit greater, and he's getting hit in the box more. But I'm going to, but because I thought Martin Odegaard affects the band a bit more, I'm going to give him an eight. He, 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 <laughs> oh, he might <laughs> <people laughs> argue, people might argue, said, yeah, you know, but yeah, he scored a couple of goals and he was involved in Smith Rose goal. Great, got the greatest respect of that. But, you know, when I saw how Martin Odegaard played that day, you know, oh, it was really impressive. I was really, really pleased and impressed with the way he played them. I couldn't, I couldn't take my eyes off the good things he did during a football match. Oh, Odegaard nutmegged about three players today. It was mad. Yeah, mm. it was just a joke and it was just nonchalant. Uh, let's move up to Alex Lacazette. Um, yeah. Worked his nuts off as standard. Scored a penalty. Mm. Jorginho Stask. penalty as well. <laughs> standard. You know, co- mm. committed fouls, standard. Wound up your yeah. position, standard. Feigned injury, standard. <laughs> you know, like but left, was a lead that standard, and I think that's one of the things. Yeah, you, know, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes for someone's fortune is uh, another person's misfortune is another person's misfortune, and he has benefited from the well, like Mouse Nelly, he's benefited from the fact that um, you know he's um, the main man there. Personally, I've always said, and we've probably we've disagreed about this privately and publicly. That you know his best with his position was the centre forward. He was always the man at centre forward. I know a lot of people looked at you know Abamyang's um, output and effectiveness and thought, yeah, he could play centre forward. But when you see how Lacquer plays today and how he's going to play, obviously there's going to be better teams against us. But how he leads the line and he brings people in, that's how a centre forward really should play. But, you know, we all we would all like you know, more goals from Lacquer, but you know. Till the end of the season, he's going to be someone we're going to rely on heavily because the, there's going to be like the six pointers and the games where we might be a bit slightly out of form, and we're going to need the, we're going to need him. You know what I mean? Hundred percent, hundred percent, mate. What's his score? What rating are you giving him? I'm going to give Lacker my Lacker. I'm going to give him an eight as well. I always give him uh, what he wants because no, no, he does no. You can give your marks, give, mate. You can give them what you want. Yeah, the reason why I know people say I've got a uh, a penchant for Lacazette. Well, yeah, I have because simple reasons is that if if um, if someone holds the ball up, you know, fantastically well, which he does, that enables uh, you know um, players like Smith Rowe to get in position to hurt the opposition, Odegaard to play, get in the for, for, um, like I said um, into the box. That's why I'm always going to pl- as if we play good football and play well, that is normally because Lacquer plays well. Yeah. When the band yeah, is because well, Lacquer yeah, plays And I, I, I'm always going to, you know, like I said, um, mark Lacquer high because of what he gives the team the platform. Mm, 100%. Uh, let's move on to the substitutes. Um, Hamid El Nenny came on. Steady Eddie. If you want someone to build you a wall, or build you a mountain, and give him clear instructions, he'll do it for you. And that's what he did. Held the line, held the ball, held the position. You know, Norwich, you know, got a bit of encouragement. He came on, you know, uh, Partey ran his race. He came on, you know, basically, like I said, um, put the bricks, the the loose brick, and, you know, put the cement on the loose brick and shut the door. And that's what he does. You know, I'm going to give him a a five. Uh, Let's go to Nicola Pepe. Set up Smith Rowe for his goal. Nicola Pepe, you know, again, you know, I think the young lads are showing, I mean, the standards that, you know, that, you know, that Mikel wants to maintain. It's a shame because, you know, we, you know, in an ideal situation, a 72 million pound player should be one that set the standards. But, you know, yeah. he's, uh, he's, he epitomises the phrase that no time waits for no one in football. It's a doggy, doggy world, you know. Pete, if you, if you sit down and lie down, someone's going to take your place. You know, Saka right now is comfortable. Smith Rowe's comfortable, but everyone, I heard Arsenal fans calling for Charlie Patino, which means <laughs> I'm not, no, he's only 18, but if he's ready for the first team, then, you know, people need to look over his shoulder. And that's the way football is. You mm. know, you have to do it game in, game out, season in, season out, or yep. someone else comes along and you're yesterday's man. And, you know, I don't want um, that for Pepe, but, you know, he came on effective. You know, he's involved in the goal and we give him a five. Um, Emil Smith-Rowe, 
scored off the um, bench again. And, and Emerson, bro, you know what? He's one of those lads, right? I don't know. He probably he's probably got the he's probably got the ump. The fact that you know he can't walk back into the side, but you know, it's the fact you know it's a fact that Martinelli settled, like I said, holds the ball up. Odegaard's playing good football, and Martinelli's just stretching teams that he can't get in the team. But his time will come. But you know, he's professional when he comes on, and you know when he comes on, he you know he makes sure that he cements their results and he scored a goal, and that's what you want: professionalism. You know. They, you know, injuries will always happen and then he'll get his chance and cement his place again. But for me, he scored. I'm going to give him a six. Uh, let's do three, two, one, and then we'll do the manager. Uh, we've got three mm. minutes until Brighton kicks off. The players are on the pitch right. and I know we both want to watch it. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, the Amex is not very full up. Um, three. COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all standing outside trying to scan their QR codes. <laughs> three. Two, one, eight. Eight. And I haven't taken the mark off this time because I thought, <laughs> because I thought, you know what? You know, it, it was quite a clever situation. And, you know, and that's what we bought Ben White for, his versatility, isn't it? Mm. You know, we know Ben White can play either like in midfield, probably play right. And, um, and, and he'd do a better job than Rob Holding. So, you know, I'm going to give him an eight. And you know what? He's had, he's had, he's had, he's had a, Good few results. Excellent. He's had an excellent December if you take away the Man United and the Everton games. Mm. Um, but, you know, in terms of like the fight back, his players have uh, trusted him. And, you know, what's happened? They give him some backing because, you know, you know, he's made he's made a decision, he, which he's, he, he's willing to see it through. And his players are taking his chance. You know, they could sulk and make his life difficult and probably still do. But, you know what? The fact is, is that he's, you know, like I said, he's doing the right thing by them. He's giving them chances and they're taking and impressing them. And, you know, you know, we are Mikel's biggest critics, but we're human beings as well. We're human beings. We give credit where it's due, Kenny. The difference yeah. is our and, bar know, is a lot higher than most people's yeah. bar. Our bar is a lot higher than Mikel, but you know what? He's getting good results and he deserves yeah. it. He deserves it because, you know... Yeah, mate, his subs today were good and they were at the right times today as well. Yeah, like, I feel he just, he just, for Pepe. I feel Pepe should have come on a bit earlier. But 100%. 100%. Matter, he still came on and, and set up a goal. Like, yeah, so it but, worked. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, Mikel needs to, like I said, analyse. And, um, like I said, he's going to have to grow a pair because, you know, if, I, if I've, you know, I understand he, the fact is... The situation regarding you know games against Man City, Tottenham away, and everything, Liverpool, and all those games, you know, sometimes you've got to take a risk, you know, take a risk. I can understand him when we play Spurs wanting to sort of not get caught in that little trap we got caught in um, um in 2000, 2020, both times when we lost 2 1 and 2 and we Spurs put us in a nice little trap, we fell into it. But I think that if we're effective and play and brave. You know, we you know we could be clinical. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Listen, Kenny, I appreciate you coming on, man. I know you got family and and all that around you. Boxing Day is always a big day for the English and the English Nigerians as well. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyone in England, Boxing Day is a big day. Uh, our game's obviously been called off against Wolves. Uh, Kenny Ken nineteen seventy two on Insta and Twitter, and um, yeah. We'll, uh, we would be doing this again on Tuesday, but we'll now be doing this again on New Year's Day. You won't be hungover. I'm hoping not to be hungover. Drink. Well, I'm, I've, my friend texted me um, Christmas Day and he said to me, you come into the bar. He's going to run to bar. He said, you come into the bar on New Year's Eve. I said, no, we play Man City early kickoff. So Damn I'm right, good. Start the New Year. Kenny, I'm just going to start a gym. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to s- slow down on this. So I've got no, another one. No, you know what? You know what? I've got five more days on the beer you can't, you can't, and I'm sliding down. You can't make solutions because, yeah, day, it has to be done gradually, you know, because mm. in Paris, it's that you have to, you know, you know, if you do, if you just cut it down, what you don't, what you think is bad, then you'll eventually be able to do it. If you want to go to the gym, then you've got to go into the gym. Yeah, mate, you've seen Not me. I'm like, I'm, I'm like a spring of eyes, Kenny. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, is that I don't think that you really need to go to the gym. I think what you need to do is go running, do more cardio, and get yeah. some lean muscle, and then you're ready for the gym. You have to get fit for the gym. Just like yeah. they say, get fit for football, get fit for the gym, because you don't have a situation where you put on that muscle and you've got no 
um, cardio um, vascular strength. That's all yeah. be advice to give everyone. 100%. Listen, you're the man when it comes to Jim. Kenny, I appreciate you giving up your time, man. Uh, no, love, I'm love love myself. Love it and we won. <laughs> yeah, go and enjoy the rest of the night with the family. The Brighton game's right. kicked off. Brighton are all over Brentford in the first minute. Uh, there's hardly anyone there. We're going to watch it. Kenny, love you, mate. I'll tell you around. See you soon, mate. I'll, yeah, of course.